So we're going to show you how to make a socket off properly. Um, we don't advise that you do this yourself um, because after you've been doing electrical connections you need to test it and prove that everything is safe and if you're just doing it as a DIY job you can't prove that it's safe after you've finished it so we don't advise you doing that but we're just going to show you how to do it and what it should look like in its first, uh, after it's been plastered and then also when it's connected up and how, how to do it as well. Just getting the excess plaster out of the back box. So that's a 25mm galvanised box. If you were using USB sockets, we'd advise using a minimum 35mm box so there's space in the back, but this is just standard double sockets. So you can see all the blanks are still in the box that aren't being used. Whereas a lot of the time we get sockets, all the knockouts out and plasters spewing into the box or there's holes where bits of stuff can get in. And then you can see where the cables come into the box. It's all grommeted. Whereas a lot of the time again, there's no grommets. So the cables can get damaged on the metal as it enters the, as it enters the box. You grommet there, coming in. Uh, you got an adjustable oops, adjustable lug there and then a fixed one on that side and then your earth screw at the top there so for bonding the back box you can bond the back box there is a loophole that says that you can probably get away with not bonding it if you've got a fixed lug which you've got here so most back boxes have a fixed lug on so you can actually get away with not bonding it, but it is better practice to, if you've got any metal work, bond it. Especially if there's a connection there to do it as well. In this case, we've used four mil radial circuits. Normally socket circuits would be wired on a ring using 2.5 mil cable. So we've got, as we're using radial circuits, we've bumped the cable size up to 4mm. And generally we don't use rings. We just add additional circuits instead of using the more of having more sockets on one ring main. So normally a typical old what not old fa old fashioned standard installation would have socket circuit upstairs, socket circuit downstairs one ring upstairs, one ring downstairs, where we'll separate the house into this house particularly, is two socket circuits upstairs, two socket circuits downstairs, and then one utility. So you've got five separate socket circuits in this house, all on radials. So use radial circuits, we we'll just spread, spread it out a little bit more. Uh, and then if you ever get any faults uh, down the line, We've used our CBOs, so it only takes that individual circuit out, so you've got the majority of the sockets on in the house. Minimises inconvenience in future, if you ever have any faults. Whereas if you use a dual RCD board, the RCD goes, it takes out five, five circuits in the house. That could be lights, cookers, showers, sockets, anything. So we think that this is a better method to use. And every other circuit is a radial. So every other circuit you have in a house, in your house, or any property, commercial or industrial business is a radial circuit. We think it's better to keep it consistent with radial circuits. And we get less faults with on-ring mains. Usually we, when we go testing a house, on condition reports or whatever, there's usually open rings what other problems do we normally get? Well, yeah, with ring final circuits, when you're doing end-to-end -end continuity tests, yeah. the results have to be within certain values, yeah. depending on the type of cable that's been used. Yeah. And as soon as they stray outside of those values, you've got to investigate it further. Yeah. Um, so it might be that there's a loose connection somewhere, which may or may not be found easily. Yeah. Um, so yeah, open open circuits. And then people messing with rings and doing yeah, yeah. 
um, additions and alterations to ring circuits, which, because they're usually on a B32 breaker, mm. the 2.5 cable's only rated at 27 amps. If there is a break anywhere in the ring, then immediately that cable is not protected in the event of a, uh, an overload. So in short, there's less to go wrong with a radial. Right, so if we were using a piece of 2.5, which we're not, um, all the connections I would normally double over. So to fill the connection out as as much as possible so you're getting a good tight connection. So, you see that? Yep. Yeah. So whether that's in the socket, in the back box, in a light switch, whatever, if you've got space to double the connections over, we would advise doing that as it gives you a tighter connection and less chance of the, the copper cable slipping around the screw and getting a poor connection. Get a nice tight connection on that now as it's, as it's squashed down on both pieces of the cable that we've doubled over. So there's the bonding cable to the back box. Ready to go. to sleeve everything up to uh, mark out the cables or in the cable indicators so you know which cables are what. And it gives it a little bit of basic in, uh, insulation as well within the box just in case it strays and touches a live terminal. Or So again, we're going to double all these earth cables over because they are only a 1.5 cable. So 4 mil cable comes with a 1.5 mil earth. 2.5 mil cable comes with a 1.5 mil earth. Uh, 1.5 mil cable comes with a 1 mil earth. So as this is a 1.5 mil earth, there's loads of space in the connection. So I'm going to double that over. Pull it flat so it goes in flat. Right, as this is stranded cable, so again, 1.5, 1 mil, 1.5, 2.5 is solid copper. Uh, whereas these, can you see that? It's, it's stranded cable. So it's solid copper strands. So anything above 2.5 mil turns, changes to stranded. So four mil, six mil, 10 mil, 16, 25, everything, everything above that is, um, is stranded in your twin earth. And generally armored cable ranges. So as it's stranded, we're gonna twist it. So it creates one solid one solid core. If you just stick these in the socket as they are, you tighten the screw down, it squashes and flattens these out and the screw only makes contact with the middle few conductors and spreads the other ones out. So any stranded cable always should be, should be twisted and doubled over if you can fit it in the connectors as well, but we can't fit doubled over in the sockets. It's quite tight with these in on their own. We generally use click. It's pretty pretty standard, standard stuff. Good good manufacturer, good reliable, well priced manufacturer, and we never have any problems with any of their equipment. So. Generally, this is the company that we'll use, and they do a range of every all the different colours and stuff. If you want any metal metal finishes, so on the back of the socket, you've got your live neutral, then you've got two earth connections. 
In this case, we I well, we normally put both of the earths that are on the radial circuit in the same connection to fill it out to get it as best as possible. And then the other connection that's spare, we normally use the bonding cable to bond the back box up. Rather than trying to stuff all the cables into one connection or if you split the two radial circuits up, one in earth in one side, one in the other, and then you generally get a poor connection on one side, for example, that then has an effect with the rest of the circuit down the line. So we like to keep them together so we know it's a good, a good contact. Take them ends off that. Right, so I'm going to put the blue, the neutrals in first, which are the blues. When we're putting them into the back of the socket, usually line the insulation up and hold the two cores together so they go in side by side rather than if I push one in and then the other one doesn't want to go in fully in and they kind of like that in the connection. And then rather than trying to jam the cables in, it's better if you just give the socket a little twist to get them to get them in there you go so again that's quite tight because it's two four mils but they do go in if you've made it off properly See, we've got no copper on show as well. So you don't want any copper hanging out the back of the connections. You want the copper all the way in and you just want basic insulation on show right up to the point of the, the cable entry so you can't see the copper. Now I normally do them just, just finger tight at first until we've got it in the box in position and then give it a final tighten up. You want to try and neatly push the cables into place. You want it as neat as you can. So it's a bit like it springs, it springs as well. So it kind of goes in nice and easy. You don't want to force everything in, jam it. It shouldn't be physically having to push on the socket to get, to get it back to the wall. Um, otherwise you, you could be potentially damaging putting strain, strain on the connection, strain on the cables, damaging the copper because you're bending it to and crushing it which can trip RCDs as well. So I'm going to make sure these earths go in flat so it gets a good connection across and pull them in together. Right, so I'll pull that sleeve in back. You can see that the screw has tightened down onto both them pieces of cable. So the both of the connections are flat and the screw has gone all across all four. So both two that are doubled over is give four strands of cable and the screw's clamping down on all of them. So that's what you that's the kind of connection that you you want. So you want to check all them as you're doing them. Make sure all your connections are nice and tight, nice and in line, everything's neat. Because when it's a mess, you get problems. The cables aren't tucked in neatly, they start snagging on these. When you push them back, snags on them, snags on them. You need to make sure that none of the cables go behind any of these lugs because when you put the screw in, the screw pierces it and then you get tripping, tripping breakers again when you switch everything on. 
So that's why being neat is, is important. You get less faults, less problems. They're all in nice and neat. And then I'm just gonna push it back and it should be spring, springy like that because all the cables are bent and swooped in nice and neatly. So, and then that takes absolutely no effort to, to push that back to the wall. So that's how it should be. Yeah, and then once I've pushed it back into place, as the copper moves, sometimes it loosens the screw. So I'm just gonna double check and just Tighten all these up now. Once I've put it into place. And then I'll screw it back. And on this job, we're leaving them slightly off the wall. We're not uh, energizing the circuit um, because the guy wants them leaving loose on the wall so he can paint around them. So we're going to put the screws in, but we're just going to leave them. We're just going to leave them loose off the wall so we're not uh, putting them all the way back so we can do his decorating. And then when we do put them back, we'll get a spirit level on the top. And then we'll make sure that when we screw it back, that the socket is, is level before we tighten it back. Gives a smile.